Hello everyone, and welcome to this video. My name is Seabug, and by popular demand both on Twitter and on YouTube, I've decided, well, to make this. Recently, on July 3rd, Nintendo released one of their summer updates for Animal Crossing New Horizons, which brought back my favorite activity from New Leaf, swimming and diving. And while the mechanics are pretty much the same as the ones from New Leaf, they did change and add a few things to make it a bit more polished and easier to use on the Switch. And of course, with new mechanics comes new challenges and controls to learn. Although the update is still quite new, I've figured out quite a few things in my hours spent swimming around my island. I've also paired it with a teeny bit of research from observing other players. So with all that said and done, let's get into it. Okay, let's start off simple. Jumping into the water cannonball style is great and all, but I know some people struggle with how to do the front flip like shown in the original release trailer. And the trick is actually pretty simple once you get it down. Instead of pressing A at the edge of your rock or cliff, press A a few steps before you get to the edge. When you jump right at the edge, your villager hits an invisible wall, which makes them lose their momentum, making them do a cannonball. Doing it a few steps before the edge prevents the invisible wall from stopping them so they can pull off a sweet front flip. Next tip is also something simple, but it saves your fingers from becoming numb. In New Leaf, to keep your villager paddling through the water, you had to continuously spam the A button. Holding it down just made them stop. However, in New Horizons, they've changed this. You can now hold down the A button to continuously swim. Although, it doesn't react straight away sometimes, so I'd recommend pushing A once or twice before fully holding it down. Going off the continuous swimming, sometimes swimming fast isn't the best way to catch the critters lurking below the water. Creatures such as the Gigas Giant Clam, Vampire Squid, and Isopods are continuously moving once you find them. Simply swimming fast doesn't sometimes cut it. Thankfully, there's a way to sneak up on your catch. When in the water, just simply move your joystick without pressing the A button or anything. While the water sneaking is incredibly slow, it helps get a leg up on those fast critters who don't slow down. A simple but helpful trick for catching the money-making critters. Speaking of critters, I think I've gone over all the small tricks that help with mostly swimming. Now, how about a little help for deciphering which critters are lurking below simply by the bubbles that they give off. One major addition to the update is the return of Pascal and the mermaid furniture he gives you in exchange for a scallop once per day. Mermaid furniture is crafted using newly added pearls, which can be found while swimming. Unfortunately, pearls are pretty rare, so they're hard to come by, but I found a way to help your pearl searching come a little easier. When swimming, anything hidden in the water will give off bubbles, and while I can't explain it without trouble, I have made two flowcharts to help me get my point across. I'm sure some of you wish I would have gone over Captain Gullivar's quest, but as of recording this, he hasn't shown up on my island, so I can't give info on something I don't know about. 
but from what I've seen, it's much similar to normal Gulliver's Quest, except you're looking for one item that you have to dive into the ocean to find. I'll leave a link in the description to a video that goes into the quest better than I can. Well, that's it from me. I hope, even if you knew about these tips already, you're able to share this video around and maybe help someone else who isn't quite as fortunate as you. I hope you all have a good day or night, and I'll see you later. Bye!